one of the one of the issues, and, and I'm not completely clear how related to the microbiome it is, is that you get uh, leaky gut, right? So you get pieces of bacteria, pieces of food getting through the gut wall. So could you explain what, what is leaky gut and, and why is the gut kind of susceptible to that? Sure. So the the lining of our intestinal tract is is only one cell thick. And it's literally the surface area of a tennis court. Uh, some people believe it's two tennis courts, but we won't quibble. That's a lot of surface area inside of us. And so that wall is, is literally only one cell thick. And these cells, because there's only one cell standing between everything we eat and all the bacteria that live inside of us and, and us over here. These, these cells are stuck together with what are called tight junctions. And most cultures uh, have a children's game in the States. It's called Red Rover, Red Rover, where two lines of kids lock arms and you call the person over, send Mary right over, and Mary comes running across and tries to break through these crossed arm kids. And if if she breaks through, she gets to capture somebody and take them to the other side. But if she doesn't break through, she's captured and so on until everybody's stuck on one side. And it's funny, you know, Australia has another name for it, I've forgotten. But uh, in the UK, it's Red Rover. But all, all, almost all cultures have this game. So all of our cells are crossed arms to prevent stuff from getting through. Now the plant defense system was designed to break through those crossed arms. And it's a rather uh, impressive uh, way of doing it that was really, I think, proven by uh, an Italian who's a pediatric gastroenterologist in America, now at Harvard, by the name of Alessio Fisano. And Dr. Fisano wanted to figure out why celiac disease, which is the extreme form of gluten intolerance, why gluten was the culprit in all of this. And that's worth an hour podcast. But I'll just say that what he found was that gluten, which happens to be a lectin, which is a you know, plant defense molecule, is capable of, if it can, stick to the wall of the gut. And it makes a chemical called zonulin. And zonulin then sticks to a receptor and it literally breaks the tight junction. So now you have a gap. And through that gap, not only can other plant material get through, but bacteria can get through and even undigested food particles can get through. Now here's the problem. On the other side of the wall of the gut, 80% of all of our white blood cells, our immune system, sits there. Why? Because if you think about it, that's our largest exposure to the outside world. There's a tennis court exposure to the outside world. And we think of our skin as the exposure to the outside world, but our skin is nowhere near a tennis court. And so we have this vast exposure to the outside world and a system designed by plants to make that fall apart. Now, once your immune system sees these foreign particles, it goes, holy cow, we're under attack. Um, the, you know, the, the hordes are at the gate. And we've got to call in reinforcements, number one, and we've got to alert the rest of the body that there's trouble and prepare yourselves. So we hear about, well, you know, inflammation is the cause of you know, most chronic diseases, which is true. But where the heck did the inflammation come from? Well, it came from this 
basically battle stations cry from our gut immune system that we're under attack. And if this goes on daily for extended periods of time, then and that's how you get chronic inflammation. And that's what we're dealing with now. Nothing wrong with, it, with inflammation. If, if I get a splinter in my finger, it's going to get really red and it's going to get really sore. And thankfully, that's calling my attention that it's there. And thankfully, I can pull that splinter out and that inflammation will go away. Imagine that that splinter is on the inside of us and it never goes away because it's constantly leaking through the wall of our gut. And now I've got a, you know, I've got a red sore splinter down there and word gets out to the rest of the body. In today's fast paced world, stress is something that we all deal with. But what if there was a simple solution to help you manage it better? Enter magnesium. Specifically, Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Magnesium Breakthrough is designed to help you replenish your magnesium levels and helps you maintain healthy levels of stress hormones like cortisol, promote a more balanced stress response in your nervous and hormone systems, and supports the healthy production of GABA, the neurotransmitter known for its relaxing effects. What sets Magnesium Breakthrough apart is its unique formulation containing all seven forms of magnesium. My wife takes Magnesium Breakthrough in the morning to help her stay calm and focused during the day, while I take it in the evening to ensure a good night's relaxing sleep. If you're interested in trying Magnesium Breakthrough, go to bioptimizers.com modern and enjoy 10% off your purchase with the code modern10. Plus, there's additional gifts waiting for you with each purchase. How, how much accepted is the kind of leaky gut or, or gut permeability in mainstream medicine at this moment? I mean, is it being more accepted? Uh, very slowly. Um, first of all, I, if you had asked me 20 years ago what I thought about leaky gut, I probably, when I was first getting into this, I probably would have told you it was pseudoscience. It was talked about. But again, we now have blood tests to quantify the degree of leaky gut. We now have blood tests to look at food sensitivities, which are very different than food allergies. And we can quantify the repair of leaky gut. And we can show, as I've done, that really all autoimmune diseases are secondary to leaky gut. And the, you can fix or put the autoimmune disease in remission by repairing the leaky gut. In fact, in my patient population, 94% uh, of patients with a diagnosed measurable autoimmune condition will go into remission on no drugs in a year, now, within a year of starting uh, the gut check program, which is not bad, I must say. Mm. Now, I mean, I'll give you a, a very interesting example from today. Let's see if, if you can make the connection that the researchers didn't make, and it's not a test. But there was a, pa there was a paper in, uh, out this week, researchers looking at uh, rheumatoid arthritis, an autoimmune disease, noticed that people with chronic sinus infections uh, had a much higher incidence of rheumatoid arthritis. And that was kind of the purpose of the paper that, hey, you know, isn't that interesting? People who get chronic sinus infections uh, have a much higher incidence of rheumatoid arthritis. Now, having been someone who used to get lots of chronic sinus infections, uh, what happens when you go to your GP and have a sinus infection. What does the GP do for you? It would give you an antibiotic or? Bingo, of course. Yes. They give you an antibiotic, a broad spectrum antibiotic. And you 
clear up, but then you get it again and they give you an, uh, more broad spectrum antibiotics. And interestingly enough, what these researchers didn't make the connection is, huh, these people with rheumatoid arthritis had lots of sinus infections, but they didn't make the connection that it wasn't the sinus infection that caused the rheumatoid arthritis. It was the fact that the repeated rounds of antibiotics decimated the guys who were in charge of protecting the wall of the gut in the first place. And so many of my patients with autoimmune disease uh, have childhood history of lots of tonsillitis and lots of ear, nose, and throat infections and lots and lots of antibiotics. And, uh, and there you go. Interesting. Yes. So you talked about blood markers. How could someone decide, how could someone tell that they have kind of a leaky gut problem? Well, uh, one easy way, if, if you have a chronic disease, you choose the chronic disease, you have leaky gut, period. Uh, if you have coronary artery disease, you have leaky gut. If you have prediabetes or diabetes, you have leaky gut. If you have arthritis, you have leaky gut. Uh, if you have osteopenia or osteoporosis, you have leaky gut. Now, I don't say that to be for hyperbole. There are well-researched, published papers that I reference in Gut Check to make my point. And I don't, you know, it's, I'm just, I've just been trying to figure out how Hippocrates knew all this. And with every literally passing week, another piece of the puzzle uh, comes out. So, so that's one thing. Uh, but there are leaky gut tests, uh, and they're, they're available. Uh, I use a system looking at anti-zonulin IgG and anti-actin IgG and anti lipopolysaccharides LPS IgG. But there are other ways to do it. Uh, but you can you can measure it, you can prove it exists, and you can prove that you can make it go away. You can seal the leaky gut. I think another way of, of describing this to people in, 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 in even a more morbid way. So Hippocrates you know, said all disease begins in the gut. Another way to look at it is that death begins in the gut. And yeah, it's quite morbid. <laughs> but uh, it's another way of saying that as this wall of the gut begins to break down, like, you know, the Great Wall of China breaks down or the wall around a castle breaks down and the hordes begin to get into the kingdom, then you can you can prove this in experimental animals that that's when all these processes occur and death occurs. And the more intact that wall is as you age, your health span is potentially you know, unlimited. And you look at these super old people, late 90s, early 100s, who are you know, herding their sheep at 105 years old in Sardinia. And these guys have, number one, incredibly robust gut microbiome. They, they have an incredibly you know, tight wall of their gut. And you start going, well, gee. And of course, they haven't been exposed to our antibiotics. They haven't been exposed to Roundup yet. And it's like, oh, that's how the system's supposed to work. I get it. Oh, and they have an incredibly diverse microbiome compared to those of us who live in the West. I mean, it's just, it's rich, it's teeming, it's a tropical rainforest. And what we should learn from all this is it really does take a village to have a, a useful functioning uh, higher organism. You need a lot of the single cell organisms that we thought eh, weren't very important. Mm -hmm.